Legend Total War here, and today we're doing a Rate Your Doomstack video, this time covering a hero spam of Undivided Blood Reapers. So he's got the Demon Prince in there, obviously. It looks like he's... I'm not entirely sure what dedication he's gone with, to be honest. Um, and he's got 17 Blood Reapers. I think they're on Juggernauts. I'm not entirely sure, though. Um, they've got a Plague Ridden of Nurgle, obviously for the healer, and then a Iridescent Horror of Cinch. Probably for damage dealing, but the thing is, if you're going to go with um, a themed doom stack, um, I don't know if this was necessarily good for that. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure if I really want to make use of it, because we'll, we'll, we'll just see how we go. Anyway, we're going up against um, like more than three full stacks of Cathay, mostly infantry. There's a few cannons in there. Um, we can seduce some units, but we're not going to do that. The battle result says uh, close defeat. Let's just jump in here and see how it goes. Shit. Oh no, he's gone with a Slanesh dedication. Why Slanesh? That's weird. But anyway, let's jump in here and have a look. Doesn't have any Slanesh units. Also, let's do a shout out to another creator. Today's shout out is going to be to Monsters Abound. Currently at 24,000 subscribers, this guy does some excellent Let's Plays. So his most recent Let's Play campaign uh, with the Legion of Chaos, he's doing it where he's modded out the Rifts. So that should make it at least a lot more enjoyable for him to play it. So if you want to see some really high quality Let's Plays, go and check out Monsters Abound. Anyway, let's back onto the video, onto the battle I mean. Hope you guys are, in, are liking the creator shoutouts. I intend to keep doing a couple more of them. Just trying to spotlight on other guys that are doing a good job. So yeah, okay, no, they're on blood shrines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so they're not on juggernauts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're riding blood shrines. All right, cool. Um, that sh that'll be interesting because that gives them passive regen while in melee. Interesting. Okay. So I'm just going to have these three stay out of it, especially the Demon Prince. Wow! 52 melee attack! <laughs> oh, the Demon Prince sucks. Uh, anyway. So yeah, these guys here, varying degrees of level. But really, once you get to level, say, 30, Every other po level up after that doesn't really matter, especially once you get to level 40, because leveling up from 40 to 50 doesn't actually provide you with any skill points, so it's actually pointless. Um, and I guess they... I don't know, when they increase the skill cap, uh, they didn't really rework many of how they build skills, so, I don't know, it's just how it is. Alright, so... Let's go... Actually, wait, let's wait for them to get organized. I think this is a pretty strong boom stack, let's see. That guy's got the chainsword. Alright, so we've got a whole bunch of um, abilities here to use as well. Cool, I'm not going to focus on that too much. Oh yeah, var varying ones. Okay, actually, let's let's get into a, uh, various groups. So these ones here. Uh, spell resistance isn't important. So I'm just putting it into the groups based on what their what their chosen skill is. Yeah, the spell resistance one isn't that good. I'm glad you didn't put too many with that. All right, we should probably get in there now. Good timing. Alright, so yeah, Control Group 1 is the Locus of Wrath. We don't want to pop it down all at the same time, it doesn't stack. And this one in Control Group 2, Locus of Fury. So you want to be popping them down at the same time, but not all of them at the same time. And then you've got this one over here with Spell Resistance, which... Spell Resistance now is not very useful, compared to what Magic Resistance used to be. Wow, Bounce Power's actually still in our favor. But then again, only half of their forces have really shown up here. Speed of 75 makes them faster than regular blood shrines. I'll send in the healer if I absolutely need to, but once they get in there, they should do just fine. Because the problem here is just the cannon shooting at us. I'm not going to summon any of these. Oh, hang on, hang on. What the hell? You can't get both of those. How'd you... What the... What the... What the how'd you do that? 
Because in order to get someone from beyond, you have to dedicate to Chaos Undivided. In order to get someone from beyond Demonettes, you have to... That's interesting. Hmm. Alright, and uh, let's start doing a bit of this. So yeah, don't want to pop in all that at the same time. The Bane Spear, cool, you got the Corn Swords. And... whatever. Light Boil. Cool, and... cool. Now, this kind of Doomstack wouldn't be that difficult to make because you can increase the capacity of Blood Reapers at a tier 3 corn dedicated settlement, so you wouldn't need that many to get this going. And I don't think they're making any benefit for the dedication. And you could do this with corn. I just don't really understand why this would be better in Undivided apart from the Plague Ridden to heal them, except for the fact that they can heal on their own because they have gore feast. It's one of the main reasons why I like Blood Shrine so much. I think they're just really good. Yeah, we can do that. Don't need it though. Cool. Giving them really good weapon strength. Cool. Ideally, we should be trying to take out, trying to take out the grain, grand cannons first. But bleh, we don't need to fight the battle perfectly in a doomstack test. In fact, we should really try to fight these battles as stupidly as possible. Because like an idiot-proof army gets high, high points. I guess the big problem that I've got with this situation is I don't know how enjoyable you guys find hero spam doomstacks. So leave some feedback in the comments. Let me know whether you prefer um, you know, unit-based doomstacks or hero-based ones. Because the, the, obviously hero spams have always been very powerful. Just about every combination of hero spams is close to 10 out of 10. With some exceptions, obviously. Like, I don't think you could do a Cathay hero spam. That wouldn't work. Better get that spell resistance in there. Oh, and the... Yeah, actually, that makes sense. That was the most damaged one as well. Good. Yeah, I don't think you need that. I just don't think you need it. Spells just don't do that much damage to single entities in the first place. So we got these summons over here. I'm really curious to see how his um, glory dedication has enabled this. Those should be mutually exclusive. Yep, and just keep them out of it. Who needs magic? Oh my god, maybe I'm really infected with corn corruption. Imagine me saying, who needs magic in Warhammer 2? In Warhammer 2, I would like take off a full point if you didn't have a wizard in your army. I mean, he's got two wizards on the army. Three. Oh, yeah, two wizards on the army. What else we got? Yeah, don't need that. Make sure we keep them together. But yeah, this is pretty good. Pretty good. The thing is, though, to keep in mind, we're going up against an army that is really not well equipped to dealing with single entities. Infantry in general just don't do well against it. These are an anti infantry. I'd be curious to see how this would fare against ogres. Um, like if it was going up against a bunch of stone hordes, I think it would really struggle because, uh, you know. We benefit greatly because of the anti-infantry bonus here. I still think that it can handle it. For sure. But this is very much an anti-infantry army. And we're going up against primarily infantry. See, what I liked about the previous Doomstack that we raided. Is that he went up against an army that we weren't good against. 
and it still managed to you know do pretty well. But still, we're going up against an absolute ton of units here. Uh, okay, the Fire Rain Rockets will do more damage to their own troops than to us, so let's go get rid of them. Problem with taking them out, though, is that that will cause them to take so much balance of power loss that it's going to get them an early army losses. Like, they're going to get early, early army losses anyway. I think they're shooting at us a little bit. How dare you? Just leave leave them out of it. In fact, just leave. Don't eat them. Just leave. I don't think it's bad to have the Iridescent Horror in there, but I definitely don't think we needed it in this battle. And we definitely don't need fucking Daniel. Biggest bloody dipshit. He's Warhammer 3's Throg. I don't even need to use our abilities. It's just, it's super strong and we just regenerate while in melee. It's on very hard battle difficulty. They're much better off fighting in a blob back-to-back. -back. That's a big thing when using single entities, and um, I think a lot of people do realize this, but um, when you fight in a blob like this, it's really hard for infantry units to even land a single hit on you because you're constantly stun-locking them. I don't really want to just kick them off the battlefield as soon as they get in here. Give them, give them something of a chance. Yeah, they love getting stuck on artillery pieces. Cool. Yeah, this is so easy. <laughs> Very strong. This is actually stronger than I thought it was going to be. This is really, really strong. It's so brainless as well. Uh, that was a lot of force that we went, went up against. I just got the army losses there. And uh, we didn't take any damage. And they're really quick. Yeah, the Hellblade, when they get 80 kills, they, uh, they get that active. Yeah, this was really fucking good. Okay. But let's have a look at how it is on the campaign map. Just because something wins the battle doesn't mean it's automatically a 10 out of 10. We need to have a look at um, how much it's costing, if there are better choices for the Demon Prince than this. Because I did give the Bloodthirster Doomstack, which I think this guy is the one that sent it in. Um, because if I'm not mistaken, that legendary lord was called Diabolus as well. I think. Because I've only covered one undivided doom stack so far. Well, this will be the second one. All right. So, yeah, he went undivided. Okay. I gotta have a look at this. So you are being attacked in the end turn there. Yeah. Whatever. Just... All right. Let's have a look. So first thing I want to have a look at is this. How did you get those summons? Or was that part of your equipment? They must die. So, does he... Hang on, if I have a look here... No, he's got the summon from beyond as an army ability. Let me check his other armies. Yeah, they've got it as well. How are they getting that? That's interesting. Because I, I believe that that is supposed to be something that you can only get in the Slanesh dedication. Because in this one here, you get... Where is it? Yeah, there it is. Someone from beyond the um, Chaos Furies. But I, I could just be mistaken. I'm just not sure about this stuff. Because if you ever look through here... 
Yeah, this isn't where you get demonettes. You get the demonettes over here. Interesting. I wonder if it's possible to get the other ones as well. Very interesting, that. Yeah, because it's not in through here. Let me just double check this. Yeah, no, it's not here. Hmm. Interesting. Alright, and... Um, upkeep costs... This is actually more expensive than the... Um, uh, than the Bloodthirster Doomstack. So yeah, just looking at uh, just a random region. Right. It's very easy to increase capacity for heroes with uh, Demons of Chaos. Okay, that's all Slanesh dedication. If we have a look at uh, a corn, where'd your corn dedicate? Yeah. Yeah, the corn dedication is very easy to, to get extra of them. So if you have a look at his current capacity, I mean, it's pretty late in the campaign, but he's he's essentially got enough to build nearly two of them. And I'm sure he could build more if he dedicated more to corn. Um, very easy to, to build multiple of those armies. Because there are 226 settlements in the game. Some of them you won't be able to build in, like like uh, these ones over here, Snake Gate. Um, so if you take that away, you, you, let's just say you can get 200 total heroes um, as the Demons of Chaos. That's a lot of hero-based armies, if you wanted to do that. Uh, your economy is... Uh, because you got so many settlements, yeah. Um, just thinking about how we're going to rate this. It was super, super good. Don't get me wrong. Um... But based on his equipment, which seems to have just been undivided for the most part. See, this is what I don't understand with the undivided um, equipment, right? This is the max level undivided. All glory gained plus 10%. Ugh, at that point, you're not getting any more glory. It's stupid. Um, physical resistance for the Lord's Army. Right, that's why we were taking like next to no damage. 30%. Shouldn't it be a lot higher than that? He doesn't have the actual set. Does he? He's missing the armored tail. Right, so the, the tail that he's got here, he needs that one. What has he currently got equipped? He's got the fiendish tail. Right, okay. But if we have a look at the armored tail... Stats are negligible. Right. <laughs> we just added extra... Why didn't you do that? Why didn't you do that? F yeah, 15% extra uh, physical resistance against mortals. That would have been really good. We would have taken even less damage. You know, we didn't really take any, but still. Um, yeah, going, going down the undivided... Route. Okay, so it basically comes down to this. If you want to go cheaper armies, right then go down specialized routes, right? If you want to go down really physical resistant demons, then go undivided. Um, and you can still reduce the upkeep cost of essentially any unit in your in your army just because of the um, the various uh, benefits you get in here. Reduce upkeep cost 10%. I believe that's uh, uh, all units. Yeah. It's just not super cheap. So, yeah. I'm leaning towards giving this like a 10 out of 10. Like in terms of effectiveness, it's 10 out of 10. But it's maybe not as easy to recruit as a Bloodthirster Doomstack as Undivided. Because that way you only needed one hero, right? You only needed the uh, the Plague Ridden. Oh, you, you needed, also need a Blood Reaper to be on the ground. Um, but you didn't need to train up all of these Blood Reapers. Which would have taken, you know, not that long before they're, they're that strong. Because I think you get... The blood throne pretty quickly. Right, it's got a blood throne, not a blood shrine. Effectively the same thing. Um, look, I'd say it's as strong as a bloodthirster doomstack. We got to keep in mind that the army that we went up against here, it was really good against. If it was going up against ogres or demons, it probably wouldn't have fared so well, right? Um, it's more expensive than the bloodthirster doomstack, so I'm leaning towards giving this like a 9.5. It's insanely good. He did a really good job building it. I don't think he could have done much better, apart from actually equipping that the the uh, uh, iron tail or whatever it was. I don't know why he didn't do that. Um, but yeah, really good. I'd probably rate this 9.5 out of 10. The thing is with uh, Chaos Undivided, you could do any spams of the heroes, and I think it would be really good. If you want to spam iridescent horrors, that could actually no spamming iridescent horrors may not be that good unless you put in a, a Nurgle um, uh, plague ridden with death magic because you want to get use of get use of the uh, unlimited winds of magic. But yeah, if you had like 
19 Aluruses, 19 Plague Riddens, 19 Blood Reapers, and uh, yeah, the Iridescent Horrors would need a Death Wizard just to make sure you get access to the Unlimited Winds of Magic. Yeah, you, you could do any combination of it, and it would work with Undivided. Anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this particular Doom Stack, and whether or not you want to see more Hero Doom Stacks. I was kind of putting off doing any Hero Doom Stacks, but to be honest, we're not really getting a lot of stuff sent in at the moment. I don't blame it, because... There's not that many people even playing the game right now, so I've kind of got to deal with what I've got. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, I don't prioritize hero-based doomstacks. I way more prioritize actual units over, over heroes. Anyway, that's the end of this one. Appreciate you, and we'll see you next time, fuckers. Bye.